in October. We'll be beginning Moats Extra in the middle of the week. That's right. What many of you have been asking for and we've not been able to bring to you, on a Wednesday night, we will be broadcasting Moats Extra, but it won't be here. You'll have to pay for it because it is not RT's show. It's my own show under my own steam. It's not, therefore, uh, anybody else's responsibility what we say and do on that show. So it'll be a bit more rock and roll if you get my drift. It'll be a bit more rip-roaring. And it'll be on a Wednesday night and it'll cost you one dollar and whatever the British equivalent is at that time. One dollar for Moats Extra. I'm hoping that many of you will come with us. Not just because every Sunday is a bit too infrequent for the fast-moving political events that we cover, but for the aforementioned rock and roll twist which Moats Extra will bring. We'll be uh, announcing uh, nearer the time the kind of things that we'll be talking about, the kind of people we'll be talking to about them and give you some flavor of the show. So put that in your diary. In October, Moats Extra, midweek on a Wednesday, probably at the same time, seven till 10. Now, there's a lot to talk about in the world, and there's a lot to talk about in Britain. But we make no apology uh, for the fact that this show will deal predominantly with America. And the reason for that is that America is exploding like a supernova. A supernova explodes and the planet that's exploding, the star, tears itself literally apart, turns itself literally inside out. And from here, that's what America looks like to me. It is approaching anarchy on the streets of the United States of America. And the anarchy is not stopping short of murdering people with firearms on the streets. A Trump supporter last night was murdered and the murderers rejoiced. They rejoiced that we got a Trumper, we got a fascist. And I'll come back to the question of nomenclature in a moment. This followed, of course, a Trump fanatic, 17-year-old vigilante who killed two people and shot and wounded a third just a night before. This follows police caught on camera shooting a man seven times in the back in front of his family as he got into his car. No discernible threat to the officers involved, even Donald Trump says. He didn't like how it looked when he watched the footage. This is the proximate cause, of course, of still more rioting. I won't call it protesting, because there comes a point where you can no longer say that this is a protest when buildings and motor cars are on fire, people are being assaulted and intimidated. That becomes a riot. And as I think you know, I don't approve of riots. They go up like a rocket, but they come down like a burnt stick. And they have very often the precise opposite of the effect that people imagined they might. And I warned you about this right at the beginning of the Black Lives Matter affair in the United States. I said that if this was not handled carefully, Donald Trump would be the main winner from it. And that's already happening. Michael Moore, the great filmmaker, warning the Democratic Party in the last 24 hours that Donald Trump is catching up fast in the opinion polls. And in some swing states, particularly the state of Michigan, where uh, Michael Moore hails from, Trump has moved ahead. And it's not hard to see why, is it? If you were an American Joe, if you were mom and pop watching the television as your country literally tore itself apart, would you be terribly enthused? 
to be out voting for Joe Biden in those circumstances, a man who can no longer tie his shoelaces, no longer remember even where he is or what he is. Michael Moore says that 60 million people are incredibly energized to vote for Donald Trump. For Joe Biden, not so much, says Michael Moore, a master of understatement. And then there's the news that my friend, Governor Jesse Ventura, is, after all, entering the race. And he, the best of all of the candidates standing, will take some stopping, particularly in certain parts of the United States. And the economic situation almost has to be seen to be believed. I'll be speaking to two prominent American commentators uh, shortly. But to summarize, the economic situation in the United States is on the brink of being entirely comparable to the Great Depression that followed the crash on Wall Street in 1929. We're talking tens of millions of unemployed. We're talking millions of people facing imminent, now imminent, eviction from their homes with no possibility whatsoever of paying the rent that they had been uh, uh, relieved from paying as the stimulus package, ha ha, $1,200 runs out. No more money, no ability to pay your rent, no preclusion on evictions. We're going to have millions of people in America with nowhere to live, nowhere to work, and no money to eat in a country with hundreds of millions of guns in the midst of a polarization politically, between the right and the right, with the people being offered no meaningful plan out of this almost complete disaster. That's how America looks. Now, I want to turn to this issue of political nomenclature. You see, Donald Trump is not a fascist. If he was a fascist, there would be no elections. There would be no courts. Nobody would be allowed to demonstrate. Nobody would be allowed to exercise any civil liberties, any lawful rights at all. Trump is an oftentimes dangerous right-wing populist, to be sure, but he is not a fascist. And when you shoot one of his supporters and say you've killed a fascist, you have gone down a very dangerous road. And that's happening in America. You've all seen, I'm sure, the videos of mobs of people, overwhelmingly white people. If you want my honest opinion, overwhelmingly white middle-class people mobbing in restaurants and cafes, forcing, forcing diners on pain of who knows what to raise their fists in the BLM slogan, the BLM uh, fist, and to utter the BLM slogans. And you'll all have seen, as I have, pictures of people refusing to do it because most people, and I am one of them, do not like mob rule. This actually has more akin to fascism than the supporters of Donald Trump do. That's my view. It's not fascism, but it's closer to fascism than the people that are routinely accused of fascism. Why do I feel sore particularly about this point? Because this week I've had to get used to the fact that I, me, am far right. The Trotskyites say that I'm far right. The soft shoe shufflers of the Remain camp say that I'm far right. And now the Scottish nationalists say that I am far right. Me, taught by Michael Magahi, the miners' champion, and the late and great Tony Benn, who sat at their feet 
and learned everything that I know. I'm now far right. Why? I'll tell you why. Because although I'm the one that was carried off by the police and thrown in Greenock jail for opposing nuclear weapons, because I, despite the fact that I am the man, lifelong member of the Transport and General Workers Union and the National Union of Mine Workers, me, the, the anti-war leader, me, the champion uh, of national liberation struggles against colonialism and imperialism all over the world, I am far right. I'll tell you why. Why am I far right? Because I don't believe that a man becomes a woman merely by self-identifying as such. I'm called a homophobe because I don't want my children to be taught at school about anal sex. Despite my Stonewall Award, I'm a transphobe, I'm a homophobe. Because I supported leaving the European Union, I'm a nativist, I'm a British nationalist. Because I believe in my own country, I'm called a racist, I'm called far right. This, ladies and gentlemen, and I insist on that dichotomy, is the road to madness. You cannot go on calling everyone to the right of you a racist, a fascist, far right. Not if you want to persuade anyone. You can't go on evincing your hatred for your own country and your own country, men and women. I insist too on that dichotomy and expect your own country, men and women to give you their political support, to give you their votes, which you need in a democracy. This tendency on the so-called left has to stop now before the left disappears up its own fundament. Because you don't want that statue pulled down, you're not far right. Because you won't agree to abandon pronouns, you are not far right. Because you're demonstrating in Trafalgar Square against masks, you are not far right. You might be bonkers, but you're not necessarily far right. And because a fascist stood at the back and hung a fascist flag over the wall, that doesn't mean 30,000 people in the square were fascists. I could have hung a hammer and sickle over the same wall. That wouldn't have made the 30,000 people communists. Do you feel me? This tendency, and before I leave Trafalgar Square, I will never forget the sight of Piers Corbyn chanting freedom, freedom, standing behind an outrageously well-fed David Icke. But that doesn't mean they are fascists, that they are far right. They're just people with a different point of view to you. So what's left nowadays? If you support the Euro European Union, a bastion of neoliberal capitalist economics, a European fortress to keep out the rest of the world in trade and in free movement, that doesn't make you left. If that's left, I'm not. If you support so-called humanitarian interventions all over the world by NATO, that's not left. If that's left, I'm not. Because you want to tear down the Albert Hall because you don't like the tunes that they normally play and can't just switch over to watch something else instead, that's not left. If that's left, I'm not. Do you get me? This is where I am right now. I demand that we properly name things, that ontology is important, that identifying, misidentifying political opinions 
is the road to perdition and maybe even civil war. And we may well be on the brink of civil war in America, another one.